Hi everybody. Today we're going to talk about dynamic named ranges, which is a feature of Microsoft Excel. First of all, what is a named range and what makes one dynamic? A named range is any set of cells that you can refer to not by their reference, A1, B2, etc., but rather by its name. And the reason what you would want to do this is to make it easier for you to bring this information in and use it in your calculations and other tools in Excel. Now the one problem a named range has is that it's very specific to how big that range happens to be. So sometimes we need to be able to calculate how big the named range needs to be. It needs to grow and shrink as more records are added or as records are removed. So we're going to make a dynamic named range. To do this, we use two functions. The first function is the offset function. The concept here is that the offset function starts off with a cell and then we tell it to move up and down left and right and to grow and shrink up and down left and right and as we do that it expands and contracts to be a different reference. To, in order to tell it how to grow and shrink we're going to use a function called count a. The count a function is something that basically tells you how many blank cells, excuse me, how many non-blank cells there are in a given sheet. So with these two functions together, what it's going to look like is the offset function that starts off at a particular cell and then grows to a particular point. So we reference the first cell, then tell it how far to move up and down and how far to move left and right, which is none in our particular example, and then count how far down to go. What height do we want it to be? And so this is going to count all the non-blank cells. The last one is just that it should be one column wide. So let's see this thing in action. Here, I have a cell that says 4595, and you can imagine that this is going to grow larger and larger and more sales are going to be added. So we want a sale uh, to be added in the uh, cell F2 in the top right, and we need a reference that refers to starting at C3 and then going down as far as it needs to. So in order to accomplish this, we're going to go to the Formulas tab at the top of the screen and click on the Name Manager. We're going to create a new name in the Name Manager by clicking the New button and just give it a name that makes sense. In my case, I might go with Sales Totals. <coughs> Now after I type in the name, I need to tell it what to refer to, and we could type in a cell, but again, we're going to use the offset function to start at a cell. So offset, and then we tell it to start at cell C3. From cell C3, which again, we put dollar sign C, dollar sign 3 in, we tell it not to move up and down, left and right. So that's two zeros where it's vertical motion and where it's horizontal motion. Now after that we need to tell it how far to grow down. We have no idea how far it's going to grow down, so instead of telling it specifically what number of cells to go, we're going to tell it to count how many cells down should go. With the count A function, we start at cell C3, and then after C3, we can go ahead and tell it to go down to a particular lower level like C100 or C500 or something like that. And basically what it'll do is it'll count the non-blanks all the way down to that spot. And then, once we're done with that, we need to tell it how wide to be, and that's just one column wide, so we just type in number one. And that is your complete function for how to create a dynamic named range that will include C3 definitely, maybe more. So if we click in cell F2 and we insert a sum function, Instead of summing up starting at C3, we'll just tell it to sum up the sales totals. And as you can see, it recommends the name sales totals, which we went ahead and used, and it automatically tells it to add up everything that's in that column that exists, which comes out to 4595. If I come over here and I add another record, let's say store number two has a uh, sales record on 11 2013 and I add in a new number, you'll see that the sum actually updates and it automatically uses that additional value. To see this in another way, let's take a look at uh, a list of people here, for example. 
Now, if we want to take this whole list of people and put it in a drop-down menu in cell B1, we want to be able to refer to the list of people, and we want that reference to be able to grow and shrink. Now, once we choose the right name, cell E1 is going to tell us what the phone number is going to be. So how is it that we're going to grab all of these cells that have people's first names? We're going to go to the Name Manager, hit New, and we're going to, again, give it a name like Customer Names. Now, in the refers to box, we replace whatever's there with the offset function. Again, the offset function starts at cell A5, so I put in dollar sign A, dollar sign 5, and I can make it go down as far as I like. Um, so, 0, 0 for how wide, excuse me, how far to the right and how far down to move it, but count A tells it how far down to go. We start at cell A5 and then we tell it to go down to a specific spot, maybe A100 or A2000 or whatever we think is the right level to go down to. Once again, we then have to specify what the width is going to be, and again, it's just going to be one column wide. You can imagine a situation where you'd count how wide to go. All right, so now we have customer names, and instead of using it to calculate like we did with sales totals, what we're going to do here is instead with our customer names, we're going to click in cell B1 and use something called data validation. So we go to the data tab up at the top of the screen, click on data validation, which is about halfway across the screen. And when we get there, instead of allowing any value, we're going to allow a list of values. That list of values is going to be the customer names list that I just created. And when I hit OK, the drop down menu automatically has every person's name on it. And that is the power of your dynamic named range. Now, you notice as I choose different names, the phone numbers over on the right change. And watch what happens when I add another record to the bottom here. If I add a new person, like Robert Jones, for example, and uh, Robert has an email, uh, excuse me, a phone number and other information about him. Now, the drop down menu should include Robert, and it does. Beautiful. And when I choose Robert's name from the list, the phone number automatically updates.